All right, let's get started. A little bit about me. Moshe Weitzman. I'm a longtime Drupal contributor, like the whole time. <laughs> Started in 2001. Um, I am a freelancer uh, doing Drupal architecture, um, working on continuous um, integration and developer workflows as well. Uh, I also started a um, small Drupal consulting firm around data migration into Drupal and uh, co-wrote the migrate module um, and some other things that I um, maintain there and uh, started groups.drupal.org in the organic groups module. Um, both of those have long moved on from my care, but um, you'll find my Twitter address there too. Okay, so uh, Devel um, started in 2003. Um, it, it turns eight, meaning the version eight there, that might have been a little too clever, um, is coming out this week. Um, and it's quite an old project, uh, started in 2003, just a little while after uh, Dries released um, version one, which was January of 2001. Um, and uh, it has been ported and used many, many times uh, over the years. Um, downloads three and a half million. Um, and 20,000 sites report back that they're using it. And that's despite us recommending it be disabled on production sites. <laughs> um, they're all stage and dev, but they're still reporting their usage. Sure. <laughs> um, here's the um, usage charts. Um, you can see that uh, the Drupal 8 usage is still far lower than um, prior versions. Um, but growing. Um, it really has been a, a whole community um, pitching in and porting this module over the years and developing it. Um, here's a look at the maintainers from the README. Um, Want to give a real shout out to all these folks. They put in lots of hours writing and reviewing patches and uh, keeping Devel in top shape for all of us developers. Uh, the focus of the talk today is about um, things that we have added or removed or changed in Drupal 8, um, since that's the release that's coming out this week. There were two new modules added to Devel uh, submodules. Uh, one of them is called Kint, and the other one is called Web Profiler. We're going to see more of those in a little bit. Um, and one that we removed is specifically Devel Node Access, which um, it's a great module. It gives you information on the grants that are in your database around node access and helps you debug um, access problems. Um, but we weren't able to really maintain it at the high level that we expect. So we moved it into Contrib. You're welcome to work on it there and um, use it. Okay, so the first uh, major Drupal 8 integration point is the toolbar module. Um, Devel surfaces a new top-level item in the toolbar. Um, if you click on that, uh, you have slightly different behavior depending on how your toolbar is set up. If it's in vertical mode, you will see, um, you'll able to expand and see all of the major pages that Devel offers. So that's a really good way to see all that you can do with Devel. Um, and you can also, uh, in horizontal mode, just hover over that and your expanding menu comes down. Okay, so the first um, major new page for Drupal 8 is called Container Services. Um, here you can search for any service that Drupal 8 offers um, and learn more about it. Um, in this screenshot, we're showing the service names in the left column and the corresponding class in the right column. Um, we have another tab here called parameters, which are, uh, you know, cousins of services. They are defined in the same services.yml file of Drupal 8. Um, services are really like a major innovation in Drupal 8. Um, it's a feature that we inherit from Symfony, um, and it's definitely like a clean way to um, expose your code for use by other modules and other parts of the system. 
Here's our uh, debugging page for the routing system. All of the routes on your system are exposed on the left-hand side here with their names, the corresponding path, um, what methods are allowed on that route, and then uh, not on the screenshot, but a little further to the right, there's a link for viewing the details of the route. Um, so you uh, don't have to grep the code for this stuff and look in what routing YML files. Um, if it's more convenient you, for you to do it in a browser, uh, we provide that here. Yet another major system in Drupal 8, the event system, um, provides some of the similar functionality that the hook system has traditionally maintained in Drupal. Um, here we have a listing of uh, the major events that your system exposes and the subscribers to those events. Okay, so you can see the second one, the config delete event. Um, there are a bunch of subscribers on this system to that event. Uh, you could go ahead and um, click on these. The, yeah, in this screenshot you can't see it, but these are clickable links and they open up in your editor, uh, your code editor. So there's some nice integration there. The configuration system uh, is another big innovation in Drupal 8, and Devel has embraced that one. Uh, specifically, what we do is tell you um, all the config names in your system, let you search for the ones you care about, and let you edit them by hand using a web browser. Uh, so this is uh, useful if you're just doing some development, um, less useful for like stage and prod, but I think it makes sense locally to do this sometimes. If you understand the structure of the YML file, you need to just change a value. This is a great place to do it. And uh, then you can go ahead and export your configuration after that, commit it to Git, push it along, um, whatever you need to do. Um, the old name for this functionality was called the variable editor, if people use that in prior versions. Really similar, uh, the state editor, um, it, lets you view the name value pairs in the state system and lets you edit them. Um, this has no corresponding Drupal 7 uh, feature. This is a new feature. Uh, there was no state system before. Or I guess it was also the variable system in a terribly conflated way. So um, there are many more pages in a similar vein um, to these. Uh, here's the list of the pages that you will find if you uh, look at the toolbar integration. Um, I can talk about more of these and show more of these later, um, but I want to give an overview of all that Devel is doing in Drupal 8. Uh, folks have uh, been curious if the switch user block is still part of Devel and D8. It is. Um, if you guys haven't used it, switch user is like a way to quickly masquerade as another user on the site. So given sufficient permissions, um, you will be offered a list of users to essentially you know, quickly log in as. Um, so in this screenshot here, uh, the current user is admin. His name is bolded. That indicates that you're logged in as admin. Um, and uh, you can easily log in as dummy one or dummy two by clicking on those links and then presumably log back into your main account whenever you're done testing how the site looks like, like as another user. There was a fair amount of work um, to provide useful tools for Twig developers uh, or theme developers who are in the Twig system. Um, Twig is a pretty flexible system. Uh, it lets you to define your own Twig functions um, and Twig filters. And so Devel has taken advantage of that. Uh, there's three new functions available when you install the Devel module. Devel dump, Devel message, Devel breakpoint. Let's take a look at them. So at the top, you have a um, screenshot of your code, and it shows you how to use the devel dump function. Fairly straightforward inside of those braces, um, devel dump will, um, will print out whatever content you pass to it. 
And um, this particular function, devel dump, is analogous to the KPR function in devel, if you've used that before, which is, stands for um, kint, prior, uh, kint print, K kint print, yes. Um, and uh, you're welcome to just pass no parameters and then you get the whole, all the variables that are available to, to Twig. Here's what it looks like when you do that. Um, you get a massive array, as Drupal is fond of doing, um, and you can see what parts of it you need in Twig. Devel message is the next function that Devel exposes for Twig developers. Um, it's similar to the one we just saw, Devel dump. Uh, Devel dump will drop your nasty array anywhere on the page where you use that function. Um, Devel message is the equivalent of Drupal s of Devel set message or DSM or DPM. Um, it puts your debugging stuff into the message section of the page. Uh, so it's a little bit more predictable where it's going to show up and how it's going to show up and it won't break the rendering of other parts of the page. So feel free to use Devel message. Here we see similar output or identical output but it's in the message section. All right, you can sort of tell that by the green bar on the left and the check, ma check mark that says it's an okay type message and not an error message. Devel breakpoint. Uh, so this is really handy for Twig developers. Um, this does um, what you might be used to with PHP breakpoints. Um, it forces the PHP interpreter to stop Okay, just like you might do in one of your classes or your hooks. In other parts of Drupal, you can do that in your Twig as well. Um, and uh, just to note that this requires the xdebug PHP extension. Okay, so I want to uh, cover the uh, new dumper system for Drupal 8. Uh, you might recall that um, we've had DSM for a long time. Um, and uh, it uh, traditionally, or at least in Drupal 7, used the CRUMO uh, extension in order to do pretty printing of, of big arrays. Um, CRUMO is not well maintained, so that's out for Drupal 8. Um, ironically, the maintainer just arrived, and perhaps it's maintaining it again, but for now it's not part of, um, of Devel. Uh, instead, we have a, a sub-module called Kint, that you may want to try out. It's, it comes right with Devel, and it does the pretty printing of arrays. Um, the way it does so is the Kint module exposes a um, dumper plugin. So Devel has a plugin manager and a whole plugin system for how modules can dump out variables to the screen. Um, there's a really simple one that's on by default that like does more of a plain text printing of your variables. Uh, that one's called the Doctrine, Doctrine plugin. Um, but you might want to try out the other ones. There's Kint, once you enable the submodule, or uh, with other dependencies enabled, you can have the Symfony var dumper, Devel uh, dumper plugin, or you can have, um, there's Drupal variable, Chrome PHP, and Fire PHP, I think are the other ones. So there's lots of ways to get your variable printouts now. Um, and if you're unhappy with the ones that we have put into Devel, you can write a contrib module, expose your own Devel dumper plugin from there. Um, there's a settings page for Devel where you pick which dumper is active for your site. Um, those dependencies that you need for like Symfony var dumper, you will want to install uh, composer packages in order to make those available. Okay, that's the last bullet here. Here's a list that I came up with before. Um, Doctrine is the default, as I said. Um, lots of other interesting ones here. This is what the Doctrine dumper looks like by default. Um, just a nested... Uh, presentation of variables, okay? Drupal variable plugin, a little bit less nested, seems like. Um, fancier 
is the Symphony VAR dumper one. This is the one that I see most people using, actually. And the, the, way, the easiest way to get this one is to enable a contrib module called VAR dumper. All right. There's sort of sufficient dependencies involved with this one that it doesn't come just with Devel. All right. So you need this VAR dumper module. Um, once you do, you get a couple cool new features, uh, namely the class names like what I was showing earlier uh, with container services and routing all become hyperlinks uh, where you can gain more information. Um, and open up your IDE to the right uh, to the right file and the right line for that class. Here's a look at the Kint uh, Devel Dumper plugin. Make sure to try that one out. And a little bit about coding your own dumper. Um, there's a couple pieces to it. One is that you have to write a class. Um, Usually that class would extend the Devel dumper base, like what this class does. Um, and uh, you can do that just from your own contrib or custom modules, all right? In the annotation of your class, uh, there's the different properties that you have to describe. It's really pretty simple. They really have an ID and label stuff. Um, here's the interface for Devel dumper. Uh, you have to just describe to the system um, or handle events like dump or export or export as rendable. Um, so really simple to write one of these plugins. All right, I want to talk about um, the other new submodule in Devel for Drupal 8. It's really an outstanding piece of software. Um, and if you use the query logger and memory profiler in Devel in, in prior versions, uh, those have been deprecated in favor of web profiler, which does that and a whole lot more. So web, pro, web profiler's raison d'etre is not so much to like investigate the routing and the container services of your site, it's to get information about a rendered page, a single page that just ran. It's going to collect um, performance and debugging, and debugging data about that page request, and then it's going to surface it at the bottom of the page. So uh, I have a short video that I want to show that highlights the web profiler module. Um, this video was made by Luca Lusso, who is the maintainer of this uh, web profiler module in Devel, um, super software developer. Uh, he's from Italy. Hopefully you can like understand his accent and follow uh, his great um, video here. Good morning. I'm Luca from Italy and I'm here to talk about the Web Profiler submodule of Devil. Web Profiler has been added to Devil to replace the query logger and memory profiler, but it collects and exposes way more information. After we enable the module, we can see this toolbar at the bottom of every HTML pages. Every widget has a data collector that actually collects data from some parts of Drupal 8. For example, it collects data about the request or time and memory, front-end performance, database queries, logged in user, views, blocks, forms, uh, active extensions, uh, cache, uh, or assets. The toolbar just contains an overview of the data. If we click on every of these widgets on the toolbar, we go to the dashboard which contains all the information collected. For example, this is the database dashboard which shows us every single query with uh, information about time, and with the possibility of swap placeholder, for example, and to filter the queries collected by the web profiler for this page. Here on the left, we have a list of every dashboard enabled. We can see, for example, the PHP config dashboard, the request dashboard, with have information about the request, the cookies, 
the headers were uh, sent and received from, from the browser, the access uh, check uh, service that allow us to see this page. For example, information about timeline, which show, which show us uh, uh, every single component that Drupal 8 uses to build this page, divided in service, uh, template, uh, and event uh, listener, for example. Performance timing from the front end, users, views, blocks, forms, extension enabled, the cache system, with uh, cache uh, hit and miss, for, for instance, and the assets, which show up, shows us every JavaScript and CSS used on the uh, collected uh, web page. But there are uh, way more um, data collectors we can enable. Uh, we can go uh, to the configure web profiler page, and here we have uh, the possibility to uh, choose when to purge the collected profiles, for example, when the cache clear. We can choose which storage backend to use to store the profile data. For now, we have a file storage and a database storage, which pages to exclude the web profiler, and which data collector enable. We have uh, assets, blocks, cache data collector, configuration management data collector, which show us uh, how many uh, data are read from the configuration management database, dev, the events data collector that show us events executed during the page render, the enable extensions, the forms, every HTTP calls made from Drupal to external web service, for example, every single email sent from Drupal, PHP configuration, performance timing of the front end, the request, information about routing, information about which services are used on the page, information about the state API, the theme used in the, in the page, timeline, user, and views. From this page, we can also configure the IDE settings because every single class name and method name recognized by the modules is turned into a link that brings us to the configured editor. For example, in this case, it's PHP Storm. So we can go directly to the correct file and correct uh, line of, uh, of this method. And we can configure this functionality here. We can configure the database settings, for example, to sort the query log by source of by duration and when I light a query because it's slow. And we can also purge the profiles directly from this configuration page. In the reports section, under the web profiler menu item, we find a view with all stored profiles, which is useful both for viewing a past profile and to analyze profiles collected during non-HTML responses, like API calls, for example. Just click on, a, on the token link to go to the dashboard for that profile. Thank you for listening, and uh, if you have any questions about the uh, web profiler, feel free to ping me on drupal.org on our IRC. Thank you. Okay, so web, pro web profiler is kind of incredible. Um, we've never had that much insight using just your browser into the page construction of a Drupal page. Um, so, you know, the collector system that Symfony came up with and the implementation of different collectors and the whole user experience around that is exceptional in this module. So really encourage people to use that and learn about Drupal 8 uh, with this module enabled. One thing that um, Luca didn't get into here is that um, there is integration with the XHProf module with Web Profiler. Um, you can see here that uh, you know, Web Profiler is good for collecting Drupal data, but if you need uh, PHP function level data to do performance um, evaluation, uh, you're, you know, as always, you're going to need XHProf or 
its newer and cooler cousin Tideways, um, which is available for PHP 7. Um, if you enable the Drupal XH prof module, it will go ahead and, and uh, work with Web Profiler to collect and display function level profiling information. A little bit about uh, one of the sub-modules uh, called Devel Generate in, uh, in Devel Drupal 8. This one has been in Devel for quite a while, um, but the architecture underneath changed in Drupal 8, um, and I'm excited about that. Um, I helped get a patch into Drupal core during the 8 cycle, such that fields, when they're defined in the system, email field, telephone field, text field, integers, that stuff, uh, they are now able to generate their own example data. All right, so they know what their limitations are per instance. So if you say that like there can only be three values on a certain select widget, um, or I have an integer field that only expects zero to nine, um, all of the generated sample data will be valid for that instance, okay? And Devel has nothing to do with that anymore. It's really about field definition. Um, email modules know how, the email field type module knows how to generate sample data for emails and so on and so forth. So um, the upshot of this improvement in eight is that there's less code in Devel generate. Uh, we just have to call the generate sample data method on a field and it goes ahead and hands that back. Um, and, uh, of course, Devel Generate now supports all field types. So we don't have to um, take requests and fulfill requests for um, obscure field types. They already should work with Devel Generate. Um, so that's a, a nice improvement for Devel Generate and for Core and Drupal 8. If you guys haven't uh, used Devel Generate, just a little bit about what it does. Um, if you're building a site and your client hasn't put any data into it, uh, this is really handy for just putting lorem ipsum data into your text fields, numbers into your integer fields, uh, users into your user table, and um, you know f can can populate just about any content type. Uh, and now your site looks rich, and it can help you do theming because there's actual content in there. You can demo it to a client. Um, and sort of get your project moving in advance of actual, co of actual content, which you actually don't want in the beginning of your project because you wipe your database regularly and so forth. So um, just a quick pitch for Devel Generate. Um, Devel Generate has two interfaces for actually generating all of this information. You can use uh, web forms. There's uh, usual Drupal admin pages for generating. And there's also Drush integration, too, if you prefer to use the command line. It's super fast and easy to generate 50 users and 100 nodes along with three comments and all of that sort of stuff. Okay, so um, I guess I'm gonna pause here and uh, just make it into more of a conversation if people wanna talk about Devel. Um, once the questions slow down, I'll probably do a little bit more demoing, but um, I've, I've shown enough and I, I want to get the questions going if there are any. Um, yeah, if you guys could just line up at the mic, that would be awesome. So, um, is this on? Yeah. So, um, I've been having major front end performance issues with Kint. Uh, oh. and if, if any array that's of, you know, above a certain size, it literally will just freeze the whole browser. Is, is there any movement to address that issue? Um, there may be a movement. I'm not familiar with whether there is or not. Um, you know, Kint is a third-party project, and so I am not following how they're addressing, you know, large variables that need to be printed. So I guess I can't really answer that. I guess I would add a follow-up then. Is there any consideration of other... Crumo like the tools that might be more performant in getting that into the bell core. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that we recognize that um, that people have different needs here. 
Um, and I mentioned one called the Symphony VAR Dumper. I'd encourage you to uh, download the VAR Dumper module, which makes that plugin available, and then just go to your Devel settings page and pick Symphony VAR Dumper. Do you know if the web profiler can catch uh, like Drush type commands? Like, can it catch a Drush cron run, that kind of thing? Um, I think that that's possible. Um, I'm not 100% sure but I think it can catch requests like that. I know, for example, that it catches non-HTML responses, and you can go pick them out from a list. I think that Luca showed that there. Um, so CLI-initiated responses, I'm not sure, though. I don't see a technical reason why it wouldn't be possible, and it, it would be handy for getting performance about CLI requests, so I can see the need for that. <clears throat> I actually have two questions. Number one on the uh, switching users. Did you ever consider putting in like a link that where you could click on it after you've selected a user that has lesser permissions just to return to the role instead of having to log out and log back in? Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I can see the usefulness of that too. Um, it's just that you have to really explicitly override that person's permission set in order to provide such a link because they're not allowed to do that. Um, so you're, in that sense, you're sort of half masquerading or worse, you're two people at once. You, you are the masqueradee and the masquerader at once. And so I can definitely see the user experience benefit of that, but I'm a little hesitant to try to be two things at once on a Drupal page. Drupal's not built for that. Okay, uh, yeah. the, the other one was is, uh, about XHProf. Uh, you mentioned a Drupal module. Is it a specific Drupal module or just XHProf installed to run on the website? Yeah, there's, well, there's two components to XHProf. One is the, mo the Drupal module, the Drupal Contrib module. You'll want to install that. And I think that once you install that, it will do a check to see if you have the PHP extension called XHProf or its alternative Tideways. And you have to have one of those for that module to work. Do you see that, uh, that bottom bar, the web profiler, does that pretty much replace New Relic when you have that installed? Um, I mean, is it that kind of I, I don't think so. I think that New Relic, for one thing, has like um, over time, that sort of time series uh, performance data. And so you can look back over the last month and see like, it was this release when my performance tanked. Um, and, you know, I haven't used New Relic in a while, so I can't say if the actual request by request data is the same. Uh, maybe other people can chime in and say what the differences might be. But I think definitely the sort of time series aspect is substantially different. It's similar, but the purpose of New Relic, like the purpose of Profiler is like for the thing I'm Okay, right, thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, that's a good question. And if people want to share, like, how they're using Devel um, or tips or anything like that, 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 I'm welcome for that, too. So it's a small tip that I have to share with using Kint. I read it, I think, in the blog of Mike Anello. Uh, many people make the mistake of clicking on the arrow, which seems to make sense. And in my experience, that would take minutes of loading it, uh, everything. Instead, if you try, I think it's clicking the title, that gives like a very short array of what you really wanted to see. OK, so beware where you click. Um, there, maybe there's a user experience um, lesson in there. But uh, click on the title of the thing you want and not the arrow next to it. The arrow's like an expand all, right? The plus. Yeah, that's better. Not, it's not an arrow, it's a plus. Yeah, don't do the plus, though. Do the title. Here. 
We'll Devel. Plus bad, he says. Yes. Will Devel uh, help identify missing dependencies? Um, I don't think so. Um, now, Drupal has many things it calls dependencies, um, but for the things I'm thinking of, Devel really isn't part of that. Um, you know, the first thing about dependencies is uh, composer dependencies, right? Your modules depend on composer libraries being available. Um, and Drupal dependencies, uh, Drupal module dependencies that can depend on each other. So Devel doesn't really participate in that system. Um, both Composer and Drupal have systems that enforce those dependencies. Um, so it, yeah, it, doesn't, it does a lot of developer-ish things for you, but there are other developer things that handle those two cases anyway. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, go ahead. Curiosity now. So, web profile uh, profiler. When you disable it, what happens to the data? Does it remains in the database? Is destroyed, or what happens to that data? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, in the settings for web profiler, you have the option of storing your data as files in your file system or in your database. Okay. Um, in addition, you have some control over when that data gets purged. All right, uh, there was a checkbox that we saw in the movie that said purge on cache clear. That's a relatively easy way to make sure that you don't have thousands of these lying around. Um, if you check that box, then uh, you'll just have sort of the most recent ones around, which is typically all you need. Um, and uh, there are other systems that do more interesting things by saving runs. Um, Blackfire is another profiling tool that's pretty cool. And you can have like a model run and that gets saved and you compare subsequent runs against the model run. That's not really what Web Profiler is all about. Um, that's kind of a performance uh, optimization specific tool um, that is quite cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at these web pages. Okay. Here I have a Drupal 8 site with Devel installed. Um, I have clicked on the Devel item in my toolbar. And I have um, the toolbar in this vertical mode, so it's exposing all of these pages that Devel offers. Okay. The one it's had since Disco is, is cache clear. Um, there's an easy way to clear your cache. You'll remember a screenshot about the config editor. Here it is in action. We can take our aggregator settings config object. We can read exactly what's in it here. This is the YAML. And we can change a value if we're so inclined, save it. And then this current website has different configuration. Presumably, you'd want to export that to, to Git and go ahead with the, the fancy workflow that we have in Drupal 8. This one came up in the um, introduction as well, container services. Um, you can click here and filter. Somehow. Anyway, here, he, he, oh yeah, it is filtering. These are the user ones, user auth, user authentication, the corresponding class, and Lots more information about this um, service user auth. Okay, so th this is really the equivalent of browsing its uh, services YML file. Instance parameters. I honestly have not looked in here. There's a lot of stuff in here that 
I'm not sure what it does. So uh, the route detail in this case is like the current route that we're looking at. Um, in this case, it happens to be Devel's own page, um, but you can change this query string param path and put any value you want. So if you want to see the routing definition for, uh, is that a path still? No, I picked. So I just put a UID maybe? Slash before user. Oh yeah, thanks everyone. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, for this route, here's the um, detail, okay? I guess it's, it's more informative than the routing YML file, which is a definition only. This has values in it. So you can see the value of two has made it into the, um, the, the actual user object is here and its UID is two and so forth and so on. So the, the system has already translated the two in the, in the path to its corresponding object. Information about the entity system um, right here. Here's a big array. This is the action um, entity. Um, there's lots of entities in the system, configuration entities. You can learn more about them here. The um, quite traditional execute PHP text field remains in Devel. Fortunately, it does not remain in Drupal core itself. That got removed in Drupal 8. Um, but if you were a fan of that feature, it's available for you in Devel, which is probably where it belonged the whole time. Here's a field information report. Um, it's a, a better and different presentation of the same information. Uh, core provides a field report in the um, reports section of the admin system. Uh, here's one a little different, all your field definitions and their instances and so forth and so on are here. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. You know, every so often in addition to clearing cache, you want to rebuild your menu system. Uh, that's here, reinstalling a module can be handy if its configuration or its data is messed up, you can go ahead and um, just click which modules you want to reinstall and they will get uninstalled and installed for you cleanly. Um, so that can be handy. Again, use it wisely. You'll definitely lose all the data that was being saved by that module um, by design. Quickly run cron and see what that's gonna do for you. Uh, Devel has had that for a long time. It continues to offer that. Um, and a uh, little bit of information about the session, um, namely the name and value. Uh, so definitely don't copy and paste and send it to your friends. This is secret information, at least the value part is. Um, and uh, just some more variable information about what is stored along with the current session. Um, so that's a, a look at Devel. Um, I think we have a few more minutes. I can potentially show you some other stuff. Let's, um, see if that works out. Oh, I see different things than you see. Okay. Let's try to move this up. I'm enabling the web profiler module. There it goes. Maybe move it down to here. Um, okay, so 
if I take a regular old page here, maybe this page, let's see if I get a web profiler at the bottom. Make sure you can see the bottom. There it goes. Okay, so um, on the left-hand side, it tells you what version of Drupal you're running, um, which is handy. Here I'm running a very recent version. Um, and uh, yeah, there's some pretty interesting stuff here, namely what git commit I have checked out for the current code base is written right here. Um, so it's clearly doing a little git command um, to find that out. So that's super nice. Whoa, there's the actual commit message if you hover over it. That is like good service right there. <laughs> Thank you, Luca. Um, okay, and uh, a way to get involved. <laughs> um, okay, so um, l here's like the, the list of pages that uh, you can go to that Devel offers. Um, information about your PHP environment. Um, right here, you can see which key PHP extensions I have enabled. I have the Xdebug um, enabled here. Definitely recommend that one for all you developers out there. Uh, that's how I solve hard bugs, is by stepping through them in the debugger. Um, that's how I learned Drupal. So definitely use a debugger instead of printing things all over the place. I know I showed you ways to print variables, but that's not really the way you can deal with difficult bugs. Um, okay, uh, the current route name for the page you're looking at here, in this case it's entity.user.canonical. Um, it's gonna be a little hard for people in the back to see this, I apologize. Um, and uh, just like Devel has always done, your sort of memory snapshots uh, here of memory available and memory used, uh, not in that order. And the um, front end timing for this request, which is pretty interesting. Um, DNS lookup was really fast. TCP was fast. Time to first byte was slow. Um, you know, I had just enabled a module um, for this request. Let's see if I do it again if it's faster. Yeah, that was definitely faster. 739 milliseconds for this request. So that's in the neighborhood of reasonable uh, for Drupal these days. And the number of queries, and uh, you'll remember that um, Luca clicks on these collectors and you get lots more detail. Um, when you hover over these collectors, it's just summary information. There's lots more detail behind them. Um, so go ahead and do that when you get a chance. Um, Anyone have a question on their minds right here? Go ahead. Um, I didn't hear too well. All of the article routes. The, yeah, there is an available routes. Um, that was current route, but I think that there's another one, which is routes info. Yeah, this is all of the available routes. Where's the user switch? User switch is a block. Yeah, so I have disabled that block on the current install. Uh, but definitely look at your blocks and you'll find a couple blocks related to Devel there. Um, the question was, does this work better with one debugger over the other? Um, yeah, we have to define debugger, I guess. But uh, if you mean the uh, dumper plugin, um, I think the ones that, that most people are using is that var dumper plugin. Um, if you're talking about uh, like xdebug debugging, that's really the one that everyone uses is xdebug. Um, so, yeah, it takes a little effort to get it installed on your system. It's a PHP extension, so you have to interact with your environment a bit, but it's definitely worth it. Um, and it, it works really well with PHP Storm and NetBeans and other things you might be using. 
So definitely recommend that one. All right, well, let's break there. Um, feel free to come up and uh, talk more about Devel, but thanks for coming, everyone. And as you've been hearing all day, um, there are sprints, first time sprinter workshop, mentor course sprint, general sprints. Join us on Friday for those. And uh, don't forget to um, rate the session. All right, bye-bye.